Hey students, it's Mr. Wilson here with your drill press safety presentation. Uh, all the information that I'm going to be going over with this presentation is going to help you be better prepared to use the drill press um, effectively and also to be able to take the drill press safety test. Just remember that you do have to get 100% on that safety test, uh, no matter the number of times you need to take it. So make sure you pay attention. All the information that I'm going to be sharing will potentially be on the test. Um, and so let's get started. So the first area that we're going to cover is drill press basics. What is it? What does it do? Um, I know not everybody has used the drill press before, but a lot of you have used drills before. Uh, hand drill, electric drill. And so they are very similar um, in that they drill holes and move something in a spinning direction. Um, but let's talk about what is a drill press. So a drill press is a stationary machine uh, that uses a drill bit spun at a high speed to drill a hole into a material. So remember uh, when we talked about in our general safety video that most machines in the shop work in the same way is that they have some sort of cutting blade that is spun at high speeds that performs some sort of cutting function. And so drill press is the exact same thing, right? is that the cutting blade that a drill press uses is a drill bit. And here's some images of different types of drill bits that you could use. Um, the type of cut, so remember you use a cutting blade to make a cut. Um, and so a drill press is makes a hole, that's the type of cut. Um, and a big thing to remember, drill presses are stationary. They stay in one spot. Uh, whereas like a hand drill is portable, you can move that around. Okay, so as long as you remember that it's a drill press, that it's a stationary machine that uses a drill bit for its cutting blade and drills a hole as its type of cut, you'll be good. Now, let's get an image. Here's an actual drill press. Now, these are the two models that you'll actually find in the Copper Mountain Proto Lab or wood shop. Um, this first one here on the left is called the Jet model. You guys can see Jet on the front. Uh, this model is called a bench top drill press. What that means is that this whole machine is put on top of the work bench or the countertop. So the countertop in a shop is typically called a work bench. Um, and it's typically then bolted down to then make sure that it's stationary and safe. And so that is the bench top models that we'll have in the shop. We've got two of those. Uh, the other model that we have is the Powermatic model. You can see that over here on the side. It's also yellow. You'll hear me refer to as the yellow machine. Um, it's also the everybody machine. So everybody can use this machine. Not everybody is tall as they need to be for this machine. And so we'll talk about how do you know which machine to use later in this presentation. Okay. Um, but just like we talked about early, so they're both stationary. This one is bolted to the floor, floor model. The jet is bolted to the bench top. Okay. They both spin right here, the drill bit, um, and then they both produce a hole or the type of cut. And you can also see you've got your handles right here on the sides, um, and then we'll actually talk about the start and stop buttons here at a little bit later. Um, but there is your drill press pictures. Okay, drilling basics. How do you successfully use one? Um, I'm going to talk about this information, but until you actually do it, it probably won't make a whole lot of sense. But do your best to kind of imagine these pictures that I've been talking about um, as I talk about each of kind of the basics for how to use the drill press. So first thing is obviously you're going to need to know how to turn it on and off. And so I've done a little bit of an animation or a image right here on the center of your start stop buttons okay and then your levers so we're going to focus right now on the turning on and off the machines so we've got your jet machine which is the bench top model and then you've got your power matic which is the floor model um, and so to turn on the machines okay so for the jet model you're just going to click the green start button now keep in mind that this is an actual button that has to be pushed in it's not a touch screen button that you just lightly tap and right, so you're gonna have to put just a little bit more effort than your iPhones to turn this machine on. Um, you'll also notice in this image, and you'll also see it replicated in person on the actual drill press, that the start button has a black frame around it. Okay, this actually is a protection or a safety feature of it that you can't just accidentally like hit the start button and when you're slipping, that there's actually this black frame around it that you have to be right inside that button to hit the start button for it to start. Okay. Now to start the Powermatic machine, uh, you've got this big red button and it looks like a green button in the center, but the green button, you can't see me, but I'm doing air quotes, is just a light. 
that's all it is, okay? So it's one big button here, but to turn it on, you're gonna grasp the outside edges of that big red button with your hand, and you're gonna pull it straight out, okay? And that will get the Powermatic machine or the yellow floor machine turned on. Now to turn off the machines, the jet machine, all you do is you hit that red button, turn it off. To turn off the Powermatic, it says right here, give the big red button a gentle high five. Okay, and that's the easiest way I've been able to explain it to students is that you just give that red button just a little gentle high five, okay? Um, and that will push that red button in straight in and we'll turn that machine off. Okay, so you've got the start button here, the start button here as you pull it straight out. To turn it off, you hit the stop button in. Here you give it a gentle high five. Okay, now we talked about the on and off buttons. Let's talk about the lever right here. So the lever is what controls that drill bit from going up and down. And this image looks a little funny, right? but the handles are, uh, there's three different handles that are all around that center. Let's go back to this other picture you can see. So there's actually three handles here, but they all spin that same center point, okay? And so with that, so you've got, you're gonna wanna grab that black handle, the black ball at the end, uh, to be able to pull your drill bit down. And the best practice I found is that you wanna grab the highest handle that you can um, as you're trying to go through whatever material drilling. Um, this will make it the easiest to be able to go through. It gives you enough leverage to kind of get through um, the board that you're drilling. Okay? So just remember there's three handles. Typically grab the highest handle that you can um, as you're drilling. Okay, now you've got two hands left and right, and so they each have different responsibilities when using the drill press. So the first one, let's talk about your left hand responsibility. And this is super important. So everybody open your ears, listen here. Your left hand has one responsibility, one and only one responsibility. Okay, so while you're drilling, your left hand's purpose is to hold your board down, downward to the drill press table. Right? And so you wanna make sure that it's pushing in a downward direction um, as you are drilling. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about maybe some of the issues that happen when you don't do that, okay? So your left hand's only responsibility is to hold down your board tight to the drill press table. Your right hand responsibility, your right hand has two responsibilities. So the first is that it turns on and off your machine, okay? So you'll use that right hand to press that start button or, or to pull the red button straight out and to turn it off to hit that stop button or to high five the red button, okay? The other is to control the lever. And so you're gonna be able to grab that highest handle and be able to pull down. So your right hand is a lot of moving, whereas your left hand just stays stationary holding that board down. Okay, now let's talk about how fast should I drill. And I like to call this the Goldilocks method. Okay? For those that don't know Goldilocks, just brief synopsis is you've got a girl that eats different porridge. Uh, one's too hot, one's too cold, and one's just right. And so if we drill too fast into our board, um, depending on the size of the bit, we can break the drill bit, we can often dole the bit, um, and it's gonna end up with a really yucky looking hole on your board. And okay? so we don't wanna go too fast. Uh, if we go too slow, what happens is that we increase the amount of friction on the wood. And one of the results of friction is heat. And so when you're heating up wood, what happens? It burns, um, and if it gets too hot, burning turns into fire, which is not what we want in the shop. So we don't ever want to go too slow, okay? Um, and so if we do it just right, you'll get a very cleanly drilled hole with very little effort. Um, and again, this is one thing I can talk about, but until you actually get to practice it, which you will, um, it'll make more sense. You'll be able to feel it. But just remember the Goldilocks method, not too fast, not too slow, just the right speed. Okay. So we talked about what is a drill press. We've talked about some drilling basics, how to turn it on and off, how to move the lever, what speed you should go. So now let's actually get into the safety aspect of the drill press specifically. So I talked about this a little bit earlier. So the, the jet models are bench top models, which often makes them just a little bit too tall for some people, All right? So the yellow Powermatic is safe to use for any person in the shop, okay? Um, but we only have one of those, but we've got two of the others. So how do you know if you're tall enough to use the bench top drill press? Um, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take the board that you're drilling and you're gonna stick it on the jet model drill press table. And then you're gonna stand flat footed in front of that drill press. And then you're gonna look at the top of your board. If you can easily see the top of your board with flat feet, 
that means you are tall enough to use the benchtop drill press. If you cannot easily see the top of your board, you will need to use the floor drill press. Um, this is a safety reason. Um, if you can't easily see the top of your board with that benchtop drill press with all your flat footed, what, means, what it means is that you're going to have to be on your tippy toes to be able to drill anything. And generally when you're on tippy toes, you're going to be leaning into the spinning cutting bit or the cutting blade. And when we lean into things, we increase the chance of getting hurt. And so we'd much rather you use the appropriately sized drill presses. And so make sure that you do this. Some of you will automatically know that you have to use the floor drill press and others will know that they can use all. And if you have questions on this one, I'm happy to help you let you know which machine you should use. Okay, to clamp or not to clamp. Uh, so the drill press, uh, if the board you're drilling um, doesn't follow this rule, you'll use a vise. So this thing right here is a vise. So let's look at the rule real quick. So the rule says if the material you are drilling is smaller than your hand, you the operator, your hand, you need to use a vise. If the board is bigger than your hand, then you don't need to use a vise and you can just use your hand as the clamp or the vise. Okay, so a vise right here is it's it's got a clamp attached to kind of a heavy metal plate. And so you just you would attach your board in here um, and then it would hold that in place. Your left hand would still hold the vise in place um, and then you would still use your right hand to do the drilling, but you'd use the vise to keep your hand safe because um, we don't want to be too close to uh, the spinning blade. Okay, so just a reminder of the rule. If the material you are drilling is smaller than your hand, use a vise. Okay, so that goes into kind of the next safety rule of how close can you actually get um, and in general, we should always be as far away from any splitting blade, spinning blade as possible. Um, but it's always helpful to have some sort of rule. And I can give you inches and centimeters or feet, but having some sort of reference to your own body is a lot easier to remember. Okay, so I call it the three finger rule. Um, so you should never be any closer than three fingers away from a moving drill bit. Okay? And that's minimum. You shouldn't be any closer than that. If you can be further than that, you should be. Right, keep yourself safe. So three fingers is as close as you should get to any sort of splitting drill bit. Okay, so when you are drilling, sometimes things just happen. There's accidents, things are weird. So as you are drilling, if something doesn't seem right, sound right, look right. Number one, if you still have a firm hold on your board, make sure you keep a firm hold of that board with your left hand. Okay, immediately turn off the machine with your right hand and then come get help from me, okay? Um, that's just, just the best thing to happen. Um, now, there are times where a board comes loose, it's no longer in your hand, get that machine turned off, okay? And then come get help from me, okay? Okay, so as you are drilling, once you've gotten through the board or you've gotten as deep of a hole as you need, um, this is what I want you guys to remember. And I give you these steps specifically because this is a part that everybody seems to forget. They're so nervous or they're so excited to be drilling. They get to that point where they're like, oh, I'm done drilling. And they're like, I don't know what to do. Um, and they just let go of everything. And that's when accidents happen. Okay, so number one, if you are done drilling your hole, the machine's still running, your right hand is still on the drill lever, your left hand is still holding your board down, continue to hold your board down tight with your left hand. Um, then you're going to slowly lift up on that lever until that drill bit is in the starting position out of the wood, above the wood. And then you'll turn the drill press off with your right hand because your left hand is still holding that board down. Um, once you've hit the stop button, you're going to wait until the drill bit comes to a complete stop. It's not instantaneous. It takes a few seconds to come to a complete stop. Once it's at a complete stop, it's not moving anymore, then you can move the board off of the drill press table. And so just remember your left, your right hand still have those same responsibilities um, and just make sure you go in that right order. Okay, here's a couple scenarios that you never wanna do. Right? And so I'm gonna give you each of the scenarios and kind of talk about why these are bad. So number one, never start the drill press with the drill bit touching the wood. And right? so you've adjusted your board, you've brought your lever down right? and it's in the right spot and kids get excited and they lift up their left hand from the clamp and they hit the green start button and that drill bit is still touching the wood. Why is that a bad thing? So there's two reasons that we've talked about. Okay, so one, your left hand is not supposed to be used for anything other than clamping your board down. So in this scenario, 
if you pulled your lever down, the drill bit's in the correct spot, you're gonna lift that drill bit up, let go of the lever, press the start button, that board is not gonna move because your left hand is in the clamp, which means that if you bring that lever back down after it started, it will be in the same spot. Okay, so that left hand doesn't move. Um, also, if that drill bit is touching the board when it starts, and you're not clamping it down with your left hand anymore, you've potentially turned your board into a helicopter, which we don't want to have happen. The second scenario that I have seen from time to time um, is that your left hand is still clamping the board down, you're drilling through it, but then once you start lifting that lever with your right hand, you forget that you're supposed to be pushing down with your left hand. So it's just kind of like floating there. And so then the board has some room to lift up and that bit that's spinning at 500 rotations per minute um, we'll catch that board and now turn into a helicopter, okay? So again, same reasons as before. You've misused your left hand because you've not been pushing in a downward direction um, and you've potentially turned your board into a helicopter, okay? If either of these scenarios happen, remember, you go back to that previous slide, turn the machine off, come get me, okay? Awesome. Now, when we're cleaning out the drill press, just a few things. Remember, we did this in the general safety uh, video. We clean things from top to bottom in the shop. Right? We use the drill or the bench brush to clean off the drill presses and we don't use our hands. Okay, so if you can remember these, remember top to bottom, we're going to dust off the top to the bottom of the drill press onto the workbench, onto the floor using your workbench bench brush and then we don't use our hands. We never know what could be mixed up in the wood, if there's metal shavings or just splinters in general. We don't ever want our fingers too close to drill bits or blades even though they're not moving because there's still potential for them to get hurt. Okay? And so as we're cleaning, remember top to bottom, bench brush, not your hand. Awesome. Okay, you now have all the information you need to go ahead and take your drill press safety test. Good luck. Remember, you do need to get 100%. If you don't get 100% the first time, go ahead and retake it as many times as needed to get to that 100%.